We're going to go over some of the settings customizations as well as some button layouts on the Canon R8 regarding focus. And these are the settings that I find most useful on the Canon R8. The settings I want to share today are quite versatile and they'll work under many different kinds of circumstances. A lot of them are kind of like a shortcut where you don't have to dig in through your menu to find the settings and adjust from there. However, keep in mind these settings are what works for me and my shooting styles. Yours might be different. So the very first setting I want to talk about is the electronic full time manual focus. And this is in the autofocus page six, the very first one on top. Essentially, what this does is that you can access manual focus whenever you want with this turned on, as long as the lens that you're using has electronic focus ring on it. So whenever you run into situations where it's really hard to focus, for example, it might be a silhouette photo or a backlit photo, and the lens is just having a really hard time trying to focus on the place where you want to focus on. You don't have to change any settings or on the lens to make it manual focus. All you have to do is half press the shutter and start changing the focus, and it'll activate manual focus automatically. So whenever you're taking a backlit photo or a reflection shot where the focus is hard to pinpoint and the lens is kind of like struggling to focus on the part that you want to focus on the subject. In this case, you don't have to manually change it to manual focus. To focus, you can just half press the shutter and adjust the focus. It'll automatically switch to manual focusing. Now, once you have electronic manual focus turned on, you can use these other two settings to kind of facilitate that manual focus. One of them is the manual focus peaking. I have this turned on pretty much all the time with high level and the the color I like to use is red. There's other colors that you can choose from as well. I just find the color red to be more prominent whenever I'm trying to focus. Another setting I've turned on to facilitate electronic full-time manual focus is the focus guy. Once you have this turned on, you'll see three arrows whenever you're trying to do manual focus. And once you adjust the focus ring and make these three arrows close together, it'll point to each other and turn green. That's when you know that you are in focus. I personally find these manual focus function very easy to use and very useful as well. It's just a very fast access to manual focus right away. Next setting I want to talk about on the Canon R8 is the touch and drag autofocus setting because we all know that there's no joystick or dials whatsoever on the Canon R8. So it's kind of essential to have this function on in my opinion. Even though the focus on this camera is impeccable but there's still time where i want to have access and really like fine-tune my focus and this is under the autofocus page four once you turn this on you can also pick where you want to drag on the lcd screen essentially what this does is whenever you have your eye close to the electronic viewfinder you can use your thumb and kind of like touch on the LCD screen to drag the focus point where you want it to focus at. And as for the active touch area, I have it set to right because I like to look at the electronic viewfinder with my right eye. So that leaves the right side of the panel a little bit more room for my thumb to kind of like wiggle around with. And I would assume if you're using your left eye, you will have more room with your left side of the LCD panel where you can use your left thumb. There are also many different areas that you can choose from. So feel free to play around with it and see which one suits you the best. For the positioning method, I like to use relative because it feels very similar to using a joystick. And sometimes I feel like this is even faster than using an actual joystick. So it's not necessarily bad. However, I still like that tactile feeling with the joystick somehow to adjust my focus point. In a way, I guess it makes me feel like it's more accurate. But the touch and drag autofocus is very fast to adjust as well. Now let's talk about the different buttons that I've assigned on the Canon R8 regarding to focus. The first one I want to talk about is the asterisk button right here on top. I've switched that to change between one shot and servo. Now the Canon R8 has AI focus, but personally I don't really like using that. Instead, I still prefer to have control over whenever I want to use one shot or servo. And for those of you who don't know, one shot is for whenever you're taking something that's stationary, that doesn't really move, and servo is continuous autofocus. You usually use that whenever you're shooting sports or something that's moving really fast. So the camera will adjust its focus constantly to the moving subject. Now as for AI focus, it's supposed to change between one shot and servo automatically whenever it feels like the subject is moving. And personally, I haven't had that 
much luck with it yet. So I'd rather change the settings myself instead of letting the camera to choose which one to use. There is this one setting on the autofocus page 3, the very first one is called one shot autofocus release priority, where you can choose focus priority or release priority. Basically what it means is that whenever your camera is in focus, then it'll take the shot. If it's not in focus, then it's not going to take the shot. But if you change it to release priority, that means whenever you take the shot, it'll take the shot. doesn't matter if the camera is in focus or not. Now I personally have this on focus priority most of the time for work. However, I do play with it once in a while with the released priority for street photography because usually capturing the moment is way better than have anything focused in my opinion. For street photography, that is. But honestly, it's kind of hard to miss focus with the Canon R8 because the focus is really, really good. Obviously, if you have the focus point somewhere else, then that's another story. Or perhaps you're shooting in a low light situation. And that leads to another setting that I usually turn off. And that is the autofocus being assist. Basically, it'll try to assist you when you are in a low light situation by shooting this weird orange colored looking beam that's supposed to facilitate your focus however i usually turn that off because it doesn't seem to help all the time and at the same time the beam just kind of it's kind of annoying plus i never had a problem shooting without the beam on anyways and i would never turn that on for street photography so i leave that function off all the time another function i turned off is the preview autofocus because if you have it on it'll continuously looking for focus to focus on even though you're not pressing the shutter or trying to focus anyway so if you're not using your camera taking a photo by just like pointing the camera anywhere else it'll keep on trying to focus on anything that it could find and that is just not efficient and drains the battery as well so i turn that off all the time i want to be able to focus whenever i want to and just command it to focus instead of it trying to pick up whatever it's trying to focus another button i change is the autofocus on i usually have this for back button focus and it's really easy to change in the customization button menu just switch the shutter to metering and have the autofocus on by itself and that's going to be your back button to focus but because focusing is so good on cameras nowadays i actually use the autofocus on button for eye detection essentially what it does is that whenever i press this button it'll start tracking the eye of the subject and whenever i don't need it i just don't press it and i just use the regular shutter as usual this will allow me to shoot portraits whenever i need to right away and stop shooting portrait if I'm shooting something else, something stationary by just switching different type of focus with my fingers. And I find this way faster instead of turning eye detection on or off. All I have to do is just press that and hold it and it'll start tracking people's eye for me for portraits of course. By the way, you do need to turn off eye detection in order for this to work. Now last but not least, I have this upper directional dial to subject tracking so I can switch between people, animal and vehicles. Now personally, I don't shoot vehicle that much, so I actually have this turned off. All I have here is auto, people, and animal, and then this way I can toggle between all three. So far, I find auto to be pretty spot on the most of the time, except there are a couple scenarios where it's like in a low light situation, it's kind of hard to pick up the animal I was trying to shoot. So in a way, it is more helpful to switch to the subject that you want to track. But I say generally, if you have it on auto, it'll do the job like 80 to 90% of the time. With all of these settings, it's so much easier and faster for you to adjust your focus whenever you're shooting without having to dig through the menu and change them.